we're going to be looking at example 5.3. In an example 5.3, we need to design the circuit of the figure we have right here, and that is determine the values of our RD and our RS, so that the transistor operates at IFD is equal to 0.4 milliamps, and we have a VD of plus 0.5 volts. Now the NMOS, that's what we're going to be using, the NMOS transistor has a VT of 0.7 volts, a micro and C aux equal to 100 microamps over a voltage squared, and then we have our L equal to one micrometer. We have a W as 32 micrometers, and we are to neglect the channel length modulation. And if we neglect the channel length modulation, that means that our lambda here is gonna to equal to zero. So starting this off, we have our circuit right here. We have some VDD plus 2.5 volts. We have our ID going in here. So we know we have some current and we're gonna use this voltage minus this voltage over this resistance. That is just how we would solve it. Um, and then we would do something very similar to this down here. So we need to check what is the drain voltage when compared to the gate. The gate is right here. Drain voltage can go up to one threshold below the gate voltage to still be in saturation. And for this problem, the gate voltage is grounded. And so our VD is larger, right? It's plus 0.5 volts, and that way we know it's in saturation. So to solve for this, we're going to take our RD. I might have said ID earlier, but we would take our RD, and we're going to set it equal to our VDD minus our voltage D here over this ID. So RD is equal to our VDD is going to be the 2.5 volts minus our VD that we have here. And our VD was given to us in the equation, or in the problem, as 0.5. And our current ID was also given to us as 0.4. And this is in milliamps. So when we solve for this, it's going to be 5 kilo ohms of resistance for our RD. Now we need to find our RS. So to determine the value required for our RS, we need to know the voltage at the source. This can be easily found if we know our VGS. This, in turn, can be determined from our VOV, and towards the end, we note that since VD is equal to 0.5, it's greater than our VG. The NMOS transistor is, after, after, uh, is, the NMOS transistor is operating in the saturation region, and we can use the saturation region expression of ID to determine the required value of our VOV. It's a lot of words, but let's through, look through the notes for this. So basically what we need to do is we need to find the resistance right here. And we know that we have some unknown value here, our ID as well. Well, we could use this, what we have here from the gate, and we have this down here, solve for it. And a way we would do that, and we know it's in saturation, is to look at the notes link below the like button. We're gonna be on about page 79 for this one, for an NMOS in saturation. So we have something that looks like this. So that is what's written right here. A little bit different though. And that's because we're not given all of these things specifically here. Like what's this K apostrophe N, right? What is that? Well, we would have to look in the notes for that. And we're gonna do that in a second. But for our VGS minus our VM, or VTN, that's what that is. We can also look in the notes for that. We know that VGS minus our VM is equal to our VOV or the overdrive voltage. And we can see that right here. VGS is equal to VM plus VOV. So that's just kind of a different way that they wrote it. So using that, we're going to substitute our VOV in for the VGS minus VTN. Now, what about the K apostrophe N? Well, if we look at these notes on page 75, we have K apostrophe N is equal to the micro N COX. So that's what we're going to plug in for our K apostrophe N. And the reason why we're doing that is because we were given this here for the micro C. Our VOV is not known. However, our W and our L is. Our W was given to us as 30 micro, and our L was given to us as one micro. So plugging all of this in, the only thing that we don't know is our VOV squared. Um, we do know our ID as well, that's going to be 400, and that is from this right here that we're given. Notice it says 0 0.4 in here, but it's 0 0.4 milliamps, right? So to translate this, it's going to be a 400 amps. So if we solve this, we're gonna get VOV is equal to 0.5 volts. Thus our VGS, that's what we want to find, VGS, is equal to, and if we look at this equation, we have our VT plus our V overdrive voltage. So that means that VGS is equal to, let's look at our VT, 
while our VT is given to us as 0.7 volts. The NMOS transistor has a VT of 0.7 volts. Right, we have to look at what we're looking at very carefully. And N is just, uh, I believe, like time. It's not 100% important for what we're doing here. We just need the T, so that's 0 0.7. So that's where we plug in the 0 0.7. And then we have our V overdrive voltage, which we just found to be 0 0.5. So we're going to get a 1.2 volts for our VGS. And now that's not it. What we're going to do is we're going to take this 1.2 volts and use it to solve for our resistance here. Now, we're not just going to use the 1.2 volts. The voltage between this gate right here and our source is going to be 1.2 volts, not the actual voltage over this resistor. Since we know our gate is going to be grounded, the source must be a negative 1.2 volts. So if this is grounded and we have some voltage right here, it has to be negative. And we can further prove this by saying that our VGS, the voltage GS right over here, is going to be equal to the voltage gate, just like how we did this one, the VDD minus our VD. We have our gate minus the next part which is going to be our voltage source. So we basically have zero minus 1.2. It's gonna give us a negative 1.2. So now we just plug it into the resistor value. So, or plug it in to find for the resistor value. So we basically have our voltage source minus the voltage SS over our I of D. And so with this, we are gonna get a negative 1.2 minus our negative 2.5 for the VSS. And this is all going to be divided by our ID. And our ID is 0 0.4 milliamps. So we'll take this, we'll plug it all in, and we get 3.25 kilo ohms. Now, this is a circuit that uses plus minus supplies. This is great when available, but not always there. So in the next example, it's gonna be in the playlist, link below the like button in the description. We are going to, instead of bias the gate at ground, we're gonna bias the gate between a voltage and between the plus minus supplies.